my son was totally exonerated by Mueller, who, frankly, does not like Donald Trump, me, this Donald Trump. And frankly, for my son, after being exonerated, to now get a subpoena to go again and speak again after close to 20 hours of telling everybody that would listen about a nothing meeting, yeah, I'm pretty surprised. A member of the House Judiciary Committee joins me now, Republican Andy Biggs of Arizona, of Arizona. So glad to get you on this breaking news. Thank you for being with me. First of all, why subpoena Donald Trump Jr.? Well, Harris, I don't really know. It seemed odd to me when I heard about it, and I, there really is no explanation as far as I can see. And so, uh, you know, he testified for a long time, mm -hmm. and unless they're going to conduct an additional investigation, it doesn't make any sense to uh, uh, subpoena Donald Trump Jr. to come testify before the Senate Intel Committee. That makes sense. Well, you know, moments ago, the president termed it this way. He said the Mueller report, for the first time that I'd heard him call it the Bible, he said that out of all of those one year uh, plus days of a $40 million investigation, and he went on to list, as he always does on Twitter and whatnot, 18 uh, angry Democrats on Bob Mueller's <laughs> team, so on and so forth with those attorneys. After all of that, nothing should have pointed to Donald Trump Jr. Is he right about that, as far as you've known? Yeah, I think so, because I, I've read the report, uh, uh, the 93% that's available to us, Harris, and it, there's nothing there that indicates that Don Trump Jr. Uh, did anything that's contrary to the law, and there was no indication by the Mueller team that they needed further investigation on anybody. Uh, quite frankly, they pulled the plug on that investigation, and so uh, that, that's why it seems so awkward to me to see that, that the Senate is... Uh, going to pursue this, especially after Mitch McConnell said the case is closed. Well, case closed. Congressman Biggs, I, I just want to ask about where we are. You said 93 percent unredacted. Some have it up as 98.5 yeah. yeah, if you go in that is. skip at the <laughs> DOJ for Jerry Nadler and a few other Democrats to be able to do that. They haven't done it yet, even though they could. So nearly all unredacted at that point. But when you look at this and you hear the president using this lingo, that's the Bible. Why do you think he terms it like that? And is he right about it? Well, I think what he's trying to get at is this is what everybody put their faith in, particularly the Democrats put their faith in for two years. You know, and, and it is like he says, you had 19 FBI, uh, excuse me, 19 lawyers, you had 40 agents, 2,800 subpoenas, et cetera. And it was supposed to be exhaustive. The, the, the documents there. In fact, Jerry Nadler could go down and read it anytime he wants. He yes. doesn't really want to get down there and see it. And I think that's why he's referring it to as kind of the, the Bible. It is it is is supposed to be the doctrine, if you will, on this subject. And it indicates pretty clearly uh, that there were no indictments and there was no uh, collusion or cooperation or co coordination between anybody on the Trump campaign with the Russians. And so. I view it as simply him saying, you know, that's it. It, it it's, it's over and done with, and he's right. We should be moving on. And if we're investigating anything, it should be, how did this spurious investigation get started to begin with? Well, and what the president said, no crime, but crime was committed on the other side. Those were his exact right. words today. Attorney Barr, Attorney General William Barr, had a 30-plus year relationship, we know from him at his confirmation hearings, with Bob Mueller. Now we have a situation where executive privilege has been executed by the White House. We learned this yesterday. They will now compel him not to testify. Does that help or not, keeping Bob Mueller out of the spotlight, if you will, on Capitol Hill? Well, you know, it, it, it's done. He came and testified before the Senate last week. He answered all the questions. I thought he did a great job, quite frankly. And the, Jerry Nadler said, we want to treat this like an impeachment hearing. So. At that point, there's no point to even uh, begin co trying to cooperate anymore because Mr. Nadler mm -hmm. has made it pretty clear. Hank Johnson of Georgia spilled the beans yesterday during the hearing when he says, well, this is all about impeachment because that's really what it is. There's a cadre within the Democrats that want to impeach. There's a cadre that say that'd be bad for us. But uh, Hank Johnson made it pretty clear. They want to try to impeach this president, and that's what this is all about. So. Uh, start your impeachment hearings then. Go ahead and take real testimony then, if that's mm. really what you're going to do. You know, speaking of which, uh, earlier today, Speaker Nancy Pelosi revived the notion that President Trump is, quote, self-impeaching. Let's take a watch. I'd love to get your reaction on that. Yesterday, the president is almost self-impeaching because he is every day demonstrating more 
obstruction of justice and uh, disrespect for Congress's uh, legitimate role uh, to sub subpoena. Self-impeachment, I've never heard of that. <laughs> well, it makes me want to laugh out loud, Harris, if you want the truth. I think, you know, she's just making it up as she goes along. She says self-impeachment. She says he's obstructing justice. Can you tell us how in the world he's obstructing justice? Can you tell us what the investigation is that he's, uh, he's hindering at this point? And the fact of the matter is she's just kind of making it up as she goes along, which gets back to the original point. This is being done for political purposes because they don't like Donald Trump and they're gearing for the 2020 election. That's what this is all about. All right, one last one for you, because I, I think we are at that point now where we're getting closer to the inspector general coming out with his report. And what are we anticipating yep. with that? And what impact does that have on the Mueller report and the fight for complete unredaction? Well, I think what's going to happen is, is when that comes out, you're going to find some people like Comey, Strzok, Page, Andy McCabe, maybe even Clapper and Brennan that are going to have to have some explaining to do because their FISA abuse is there. I think that that's what you're going to see. I would anticipate that to come out in the next four to eight weeks, um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But the other one, too, is I hope Mr. Huber gets going and lets us know what he's been doing, too. So there's two investigations going right now have nothing to do with President Trump at this point. All right. Uh, Congressman Andy Biggs of the great state of Arizona, good to see you Thank today. You. Thank you for Thanks, your Harris. time.